the world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. Yeah. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top, and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good, so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one. But the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a f loser. No problem. Stay yeah. a loser. Don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting. I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard. Winners only. Men who have mental health issues, I hope them, I wish them the best in the world. Different. But when they come to me and say, and I get this all the time, Andrew, I have this problem. I'm depressed and I can't go to the gym. I say, no, I disagree. You're depressed because you don't go to the gym. If you go to the gym, you might start to feel better, right? I'm saying you can't sit as a man and afford the luxury of saying, I have a mental health issue today, I'm sad today, I'm stressed today, I'm emotional today, I can't work. Because you will lose against the men who don't do that. As a man, it's player versus player. It's ultimately competitive. And as a man, you have to outcompete the other men who are prepared to get up and do it anyway. That's how it works. There's no such thing as saying, I'm sad, I need two weeks off. Not as a man if you want to be important. If you want to be important as a man, you have shit to do. You have duties. This is how it exists, this is how it's always been. If I feel sad, it does not change how I act and it does not change the things I do. If I don't feel like going to the gym, I go to the gym. If I don't feel like working, I will still work. I lived, a, I lived in a world for 15 years where I didn't feel like fighting because my nose was broken, but I had to fight anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people come up to me and, and they say, oh, but I feel this way. I don't put a, a huge amount of importance on emotions. It's not that I don't feel them. It's that I don't think they have much to do with anything at all. If I wake up in a happy mood and I have a business to run and females to cater for and things to do, if I wake up in a sad mood, I have the same shit to do. I'm gonna get it done. So where's the importance of it? It's in my mind, that's how I view it. Like, how does that affect what I'm gonna do? Well, nothing, it doesn't. It's not gonna affect how I live my life, so why sit around and think about it? This modern obsession with happiness is, is the number one problem with the world. Because I don't, I really don't believe humans were ever evolved to be happy, mm -hmm. were we? If you're gonna try hard at something, and I mean genuinely try, 99% of people will get adept at X thing. It doesn't matter what it is. If, if, if I decided I wanted to be good at piano and I gave it everything I got, I'd, play, I'd be able to play piano. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's people with one hand who can play piano. It's just how much effort you're gonna put in. I don't struggle at anything because if I decide I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And I've never struggled with motivation. So if you don't struggle with motivation, then you're never gonna struggle with anything in life. I mean, I'm naturally adept at some things and there's some things I'm not as naturally adept at. But if you're prepared to work, you're prepared to work. So no, I don't struggle with anything. Life is not a struggle to me. I do not view life as difficult in any way. I think life is extremely easy. I believe that all of my problems are gonna be fixed by me. That no one else is gonna wake up and give a fuck about my problems the way I'm gonna give a fuck. Nobody else is going to be prepared to go through what it takes to fix them but me. If I'm in the ring getting an ass kicking, not my coach, not my corner, not my fans, no one's going to get me out of there alive but me. As a man, we live in hyper-competitive environments. I don't think enough men understand how competitive the world is. 
if you want a girl, you're competing against other men. You're not the only man who had the idea of getting that girl. There's no girl you're going to see and go, oh, I'll get that girl and didn't cross anyone else's mind. Everybody else wants her. You have to outcompete other men. You have to be as competitive as possible. You have to be as successful as possible in all realms. You have to be as good looking, as funny, as smart, as spontaneous, as interesting, as charismatic, as rich as possible. You need to try very hard to be your absolute best. And as you become a better man, you'll crack through different tiers of attractiveness and eventually you get to the top and you'll be able to have any girl you want. But the truth is, I have a lot of guys ask me, similar to your question, a guy will come to me and go, how do I get a girl? I'm like, bro, you're a loser. Yeah, but I know, but how do I get a girl? Well, you're a fucking loser. You're a loser. Why are you asking me? It's like saying, how do I win a race with a push bike? You're racing Ferraris. What do you want me to do? Yeah. There's only so much you can do. There's only so hard you can pedal. There's only so many tricks and, and tips. There's only so many game things you can say, yeah. so many pickup lines. If you're a loser, it's gonna be very, very difficult and it's gonna get harder and harder. The game is rigged to become harder and harder for men. It's not getting easier, it's going the other way. And if you're gonna be on a racetrack and there's gonna be Ferraris there, and you're gonna be on a pedal bike or in a Nissan, you're gonna get smoked. That's the game. You have no. to up yourself. You have to improve yourself. I'm not going to lie to anybody here and say you don't have to improve yourself. You can stay a loser and, and get chicks because you can't. Yeah. You can't. This idea of random, just random headaches is bullshit. It's bullshit. If you have a headache, it's for a reason. Did you hit your head? Yes or no? Well, no, you didn't hit your head. So are you dehydrated? Probably. Have you drunk a bunch of water? No. If you really drink a bunch of water and you didn't hit your head and your head still hurts, have you laid down, had a little nap? Maybe you were tired and now you feel okay again. Why are you taking drugs? I know people who just randomly four times a week, I have a headache, let me just take this pill. What headache? Was your brain falling out? Are you? Is your brain rotting? Why do you have a headache for no reason? It doesn't make sense to me. It's stupid. A lot of it's psychological. A lot of it's placebo effect bullshit. And it's an entirely wrong worldview. You can't just go through life medicating yourself for imaginary fucking illness. It's dumb. If you want to get rich, you have to act quickly. You have to do things fast. Speed is rule one. Not enough people understand the, the importance of speed because every hour you spend not making money is an hour you're not going to get back. The sooner you turn on the tap to the money, the more money you're going to make. You have to be very, very quick. Life only teaches you lessons the hard way. There's no other way to truly learn a lesson. The thing is you'll notice about people is that when life is trying to give them a lesson the easy way, they'll ignore it. Oops. Oh, like you'll see it all the time. People will, some, they'll have close call, close call, close call, close call. They won't pay attention until something really bad happens. And then they'll be like, oh no, I'll do anything to take this back. Yeah. That's how people learn. No one learns the easy way. It takes a very smart person to learn the easy way. Everybody only learns the hard way ever. The number one thing people don't have control of in their lives is their mind. But what's funny about that is, the only thing in life you can truly control is your mind. You can't control other people. You can't control the weather. You can't even control your health. Your heart might stop beating. You don't make it beat. It just goes, so it's gonna turn off one day. The only thing you can control in, the, in your life is what you think in your mind. So if you're gonna sit there and go, oh, I'm sad, well, you, you can change that if you actually try, but you don't, you just accept it, right? So people have lost control of, of their own minds. And I don't understand why you would allow your mind your own mind to take power from you. Why would you believe in your, let your own mind convince you you're not a lucky person or I'm not this or I'm not confident. Why would you let your own mind sabotage you? You need to live like God is always watching. You may wow. have the opportunity to do something bad or you may have the opportunity to steal some money or snake somebody, but in the end, you're gonna pay for that and the bill will be paid. Mm -hmm. I think if you do the right thing, in my experience, if you're a person who does the right thing, Firm handshake, is on time, doesn't lie to anybody, does what he's supposed to do, is honest with a good heart, is genuinely polite to everyone he meets. If you are that person, you get very far in life. I have I've yet to meet people who just do all the simple things right, who completely fail at life. But I've met a lot of people who snake or steal some money and they get really rich, then they lose it all, or they get rich and end up a gambling addict or depressed or etc. So you have to just understand that God is always watching. He's going to reward you in the end. That's the first thing. And the second thing I will say is that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and you need to create your reality. I think the biggest problem with young people today is that they don't create their realities heavily enough. The people that they want to spend most time with aren't adding any value to their lives and then they end up wondering why they don't get any. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. And people, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're gonna end up like. They say, yeah, that's true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't wanna be. Why? You have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind.
If you were to come hang out with me and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel you'd feel self-conscious. You're right. You don't feel self with your friends. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you, or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. If you walk through life and feel like you have nothing to prove, you're a loser. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, then you are a loser because you are absolutely not the incorrect. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to your bloodline. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think, and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man, you have to build who you are. God loves to see that. Those people, for some reason, seem to be enormously lucky, right? The person who goes, I don't have to prove anything to God. I don't owe all of my ancestors any effort. You know, for 5,000 years, people were dodging saber-toothed tigers and catching the plague and running from Genghis Khan just for my stupid ass to be born. I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them a thing because I want to play video games. These people are losers. You should walk through Earth with force inside of you. If I walk, as I walked into this hotel section, everybody knew me. Not because they know who I am, but because as I move, even if, even if it's behind their head, people feel something. It's, it's an energy that comes from brutal competence. That's what happens when a predator walks in a room. You pay attention next time you're in a restaurant. If a man who's truly dangerous walks in, nearly every other man kind of looks up at the same time. Feel it. You need to or you don't survive. We've evolved with that to live. That's who I am. I couldn't imagine not being that man. I've done that because I've been trying to prove myself to my lineage my entire life. I wake up every day with something to prove. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. I wake up at the more. I'm in fantastic shape, four times world champion, fighting the matrix out here by myself, more. I will have to be braver, I must try harder. I, all I do is prove myself. So when I hear people go, I don't I have nothing to prove, then you're a loser. Peasants have never felt like they needed to prove anything, but kings felt like they needed to go and conquer land. Isn't that co it's coincidental that the king who already had it all felt like he needed to go to some far-flung land and conquer it and take it and prove he's the king. But the peasants, oh, I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You're a loser, man. You're a dummy. I absolutely and utterly, completely have everything to prove to everybody all the time. That's who I am. I will prove anything to anybody. If I sit and say X, I will prove it to anyone. I can be checked anytime. And their ancestors who fought in saber-toothed tigers or escaped the, the Mongol hordes, or managed to dodge bombs in the Second World War. All the shit they went through just for this cretin to be born. And to look at him, look at his, who he is, listen to his life story, listen to what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, and they would feel nothing but shame. Your ancestors did all that all that struggling to survive, hunter, hunting and gathering, avoiding enemies, anything it took dying at age 30 from a tooth infection all the crap they went through just for you to be born so you could smoke weed and jack off that's what your ancestors died for that's what they worked so hard for that's who you are that's the end of your fucking bloodline do you feel no shame it's fucking shameful my ancestors will look at me and think everything we went through was fucking worth it your ancestors will look at most of these people, their ancestors look at them and feel nothing but f***ing disgust. Well, I guarantee even their f***ing living relatives, their living parents aren't even proud of them. Like, the f***? Your own father's ashamed of you. And you don't even feel f***ing motivated to do f It's a f***ing shame. If you were to go and look your father in the eye and said, you know what, I could have been a f***ing, I could have been a UFC champion. I could have been a, a multi-millionaire. I could have been a race car driver. I could have been a nuclear physicist. could have done all these things, but I was busy on f***ing. You think he's going to be proud of you? No. No. And, and there's men here who will deny it, right? There's men who will go, no, 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 no. But those are the ones who are most lost. And they should look in the mirror, look deep in their own eyes and say, yes, I'm fucking disgusting. I can change this. That's the beauty about being a man. If you're disgusting, you can change it. That's the beauty. There's nothing stopping you changing it. Right. And you must accept it. You must accept it first.
most of these people, what they do is they hang around with other disgusting people, and then they're a little group of disgusting people, and they think, well, I'm not disgusting, everyone's disgusting, and this is normal, and it's normal to be a fucking golf. Not in my world, it isn't. It's not, it's not, it's not normal to be a fucking jerk off in my world. It's the things, it's the denial that's going to hold you back the most. The people who go, yes, I'm wasting my potential. Those are the ones who have potential. The ones who stand up and go, I am wasting my potential. I could be anything and I am not that yet. They have a chance. The men who go, well, no, actually, I'm fine. They're, they're inside the matrix, fully slave minded. They're a waste of time. But if you sit there and go, you know what? Yeah, I am wasting my potential. Yes, I can be more than I am. Even if I'm already great, I can be better. As good as I am, I still I still push myself to the limit every single day. I have every single thing a man could possibly want. I'm still pushing myself. This is your prerogative as a man. But you need to be instilled with a sense of duty, duty to your bloodline. You must want it. You need to want it deep inside your soul. I can't die as anything less than emperor. It's it's my destiny. There are duties that men must fulfill, whether to God or to your bloodline. If I feel extremely happy and excited, I'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard. If I feel absolutely depressed and distraught, I'm going to use that as endless energy and motivation to do amazing things and work hard. It doesn't matter what you give me. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted transferred. and transferred. It doesn't matter what fuel you give me. You give me diesel, petrol, kerosene, vodka. It doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine. Hard work is going to come out. Absolutely. Success. That's all I know how to do. Making the best move on the chessboard, regardless of how losing your position is, is a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're fucked. But still, regardless of how fucked you are, there's still a best move. There's always a best move and a worse move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of ten, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of ten, the best move might be just enough to save your ass. And on a long enough time frame, if you play the game repeatedly, day after day, taking risks, always making the best move, regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. You might end up somewhere near me. You might have dinner one day. You might stop being a brokey. Am I stopping a loser? If your girl leaves you, the best move on the board perhaps is to go to the gym, perhaps is to send her flowers, perhaps is to never text her again. But you should make the best move on the board regardless. Even if you don't want her back, you should still make the best move. You should always think that way. What move will give me the best possible strategic position? That's how you think. That's how I think. Best move on the board is how you should approach your life. Next time you're in a situation, you should sit and say, okay, this is a bad situation. I'm but what's the best move I could possibly make? What's the outcome I would like? What's the most likely move to give me that particular outcome? And you'd be surprised what some of them are. I had a guy email me the other day saying he lost his job. And he was the worst salesman. Well, then you deserve to lose your job. That's how sales works. It's, it's fierce. He goes, well, I don't know. What should I do? I said, what's the best move on the board? He goes, well, I really want the sales job. I think I can get good at it. I said, well, then work for free. So do you have another job yet? He said, no. Okay, while you're applying for other jobs, instead of sitting around on your, on your ass at home, keep working for free for the company for two or three weeks and see if you can turn it around. And he tried that. And he couldn't because he's shit at sales. But the point is, if he would have sat at home doing nothing, it wouldn't have helped him. The best move on the board was to try and prove to his company that he's actually worth something. If he was worth something, in those two or three weeks, he might have turned it around and got his job back. He still got to apply for new jobs. He didn't lose anything. Best move on the chessboard. That's how I want you to approach your life, ladies and gentlemen. It's the mental model in which you should apply the scenarios to deduce what is the best possible action. Because if you're always making the best move and very rarely making the worst move, it's pretty hard to lose. It's player versus player out here. The world is about winners and losers and everyone is competing against each other. You are competing against me. I'm competing against you. You're competing against your friend. You and you're competing against your enemies. You want a dollar. So does everyone else. You want that hot girl, so does everyone else. You want that house, so does everyone else. What's amazing is the things you want, the main reason you want them is because other people want them. So you can show off that you have it and they don't. It is competition. Kind of like the age old adage, if a tiger is chasing 10 people, you don't have to be the fastest. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy. Because he's fucked. So considering that a lot of people are constantly making the wrong moves, if you can just start to make the right moves most of the time, you'll see exactly how easy life can be. I don't even want your energy around me. 
Because quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. You can give it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack fucking table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. He'll look at it and it's just long and he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. People say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. Well, I'm going to sit here and once again explain to you how different the world is when you have a mind which isn't warped and affected easily by outside influences. You are never going to become a robot. This has nothing to do with not feeling emotions. This has nothing to do with just becoming an empty, emotionless void of a person. That's not what this is. This is about understanding that you're a human being. You're going to feel emotions. This is a beautiful thing. And making sure that you use them in the correct way. A, and B, you do not ever let them stop you doing what you're supposed to do. I say to people often, I haven't felt like going to the gym in two years. I'm wearing my gym clothes right now. I just finished training. I haven't felt like training in two years. I, after 10 years of professional fighting, after giving my life to exercise, genuinely, I have not woke up and felt like, oh, I really want to train. I haven't felt that way in a long time. That's why I retired from fighting. But I have still gone and I have still trained regardless of how I feel. So this is one of the tenets, and there's going to be a lot of things you're going to learn, of an iron mindset. It's the ability to not let your feelings affect you, and sometimes to do the complete opposite of how you feel. Because you're not going to very often feel like working hard. You're not going to always feel like doing the right thing. You're not always going to be motivated. The idea that you need to be constantly motivated shows how weak your mindset is. I don't need motivation to go to the gym. I cannot want to go with every fiber of my being, and I will still be there. Because I use my cerebral ability, I use my mind and I logically decide what I'm going to do with my day regardless of how I feel, regardless of whether I'm motivated or not. Because that's all life is and that's all the world is. Life is just getting things done, doing the right things, doing the important things, making sure they're done efficiently and thoroughly so that you live the best possible life. It's as simple as that. It's not particularly complicated. I'm not going to be and I don't want to be one of those guys who's like motivation, inspirational, that I've never been one of them people. I don't believe in motivation, inspiration. I don't believe in that crap. I don't believe that you need motivation to get things done. I'm not going to sit here and just talk a whole bunch of motivational things to make you feel good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the things I always did that allowed me to put together the mindset I currently have. So if you look at any story, literally any story with a hero in it, they all have one thing in common. And that thing is that there's always a villain. You cannot have a hero without a villain. It doesn't matter. You can think of any superhero, any comic book, any, any book you can think of, any movie, there's always a good guy and there's a bad guy. So for the good guy to exist, there has to be a bad guy. There's no other way for the duality of the universe to continue without this basic tenth. So you want to be the good guy in your story. You want, and in every, I've said this before actually, as a man, life is going to be difficult. It's more difficult than being a woman. It's more difficult than anything else. So it's very easy to see yourself. Life is actually easier as a whole if you see yourself as a hero. Because in every single hero story, the hero suffers. He has a hard time. And if you understand that you're suffering because you're a hero, then the suffering begins to make sense. So you can be sitting here right now and go, my woman doesn't respect me. Uh, I have no money in the bank. This is difficult. I, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. You can feel sorry for yourself or you can say, yeah, my woman doesn't respect me. I'm struggling. I can't make money. But you know what? That's because that's I'm a fucking superhero and my life's going to be hard because I'm a man. And as a hero, it's going to be difficult. These are the tests and the trials and tribulations I have to go through to become someone. Every single male superhero went through a whole ton of before he became superhero. You've seen the Batman movies. He was, his parents died. He was, he was locked up in jail. All these bad things happen, and then they emerge as the hero. And this is done for a reason, because it's the reality of life, especially as a man. So right now, you have to understand that you're the hero in this movie, and if you're struggling, you're struggling for a very important reason. And how you handle these struggles, and how you deal with these struggles, are going to de decide the kind of person you're going to be afterwards. You're going to be a superhero, or you're going to succumb to them, and you're going to fail. So be happy that you're struggling, because that's important. That's the first thing. Second thing is, there has to be a villain. Now, most people think their villain is someone else. You see this all the time. The villain's the opposite of the hero. So if you're sitting at home and you haven't got much money and you're, and you're broke and you're pissed off and you're depressed and you look at me and I have four supercars and all these girls, I'm traveling the world, I go everywhere I want, you may think I'm your villain. People look at other people and say, oh, that guy has this, this guy has this, and they become envious and they think that's the villain. 
That's not true. That's not the case because every single person has different circumstances. There are things you have that I don't have and there's things I have that you don't have. So I may have had a genetic gift over you, for example, because I'm a, a fantastic kickboxer, but you may have been born more wealthy than me. I was born in a very, very poor family. So I had advantages and disadvantages. You had advantages and disadvantages. So comparing yourself to other people is, is asinine and it's inane because it's not a level fair playing ground. There are some people who are born to millionaire parents who are gorgeous, model, good looking and have six packs without trying. Some people are lucky like that. That's just how it is. So comparing yourself to these people is not going to help you. Your villain is nobody else. Your villain is someone you're going to create. And you're going to create your villain because he's going to motivate you to be the most powerful hero you can possibly be. So you're going to create your villain. And this is the task for the first week. This is a six-week training course. And over each week, you have a very important task. And the task for this week is to create your villain. To make sure that there was no disadvantages involved. Your villain is going to be a clone of you. But what your villain is going to have is he's going to have some things you don't have. And your villain is going to be the person who basically without requirement for motivation, without requirement, without being, no matter how he feels that day, no matter how stressed he is from work, regardless of what happens to him, your villain's gonna be the guy who always does exactly what he wants to do. So your villain's gonna be the guy who goes to the gym regardless of how he feels. Your villain's gonna be the guy who approaches every beautiful girl he ever sees and says, hey, I, I really think you're beautiful. Goes over to him and talks to them. Your villain's gonna be the guy who asks for a raise at work. Your villain's going to be the guy who does everything he wants, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's not motivated or not, regardless if he's shy to talk to that girl or people are watching or his ankle hurts, he doesn't want to go to the gym, whatever, or his boss is, he thinks his boss is going to fire him. Your villain is that dude who does anything he wants to do. You have to sit and you have to make a list of all the things. You have to sit there and say, if I did everything I wanted to do, if I were to be the best version of myself possible, what would I do? Okay, well, I'd go to the gym every day. I'd get up at 6 a.m. and I'd go to the gym every day. You write that down. My villain is the kind of guy who reads really important books. I'm, I, I say I don't have time, but my enemy, this villain, he reads books. He finds time. He doesn't watch TV ever. He doesn't waste time ever. He doesn't eat junk food. He reads books. Writes it down. And you have to make a list. Now, this list at first should be easy for you, but then you're going to get to about seven or eight things and you're going to stop. No, this list needs to be 25 to 30 points long, minimum. This guy you're building, your arch nemesis, you have to write down every single quality about this guy. What he does, he goes to the gym every day, 6 a.m. He doesn't watch TV, he doesn't eat junk food, he goes up to beautiful girls, etc., etc., etc. 25 or 30 points long. Because this is going to become your enemy for the next six weeks of training. You want to become a hero, you need someone to battle against. This is who you're battling against. You're battling against a better version of yourself, a version of yourself that doesn't succumb to how he feels, but does what he's supposed to do anyway. So this is who your villain's going to be. And when you're writing down this list, all the qualities your villain has, imagine what this person looks like. You have to put genuine effort into this. You have to imagine what he looks like, imagine how he walks, imagine how he talks, imagine what people think when they see him. Imagine how different you would be if you had been going to the gym every single day for an hour and a half, every single day for the last two, three, four years. Imagine it. Imagine how differently people would look at you. Imagine how differently females would, would treat you if you were jacked like that guy would be. You have to sit and you have to put down all these qualities and then once the qualities are there, 25 or 30 minimum, then you have to imagine what kind of person this is. You have to imagine what he looks like, what he talks like, what he thinks like. Imagine how he views the world because this is who you're going to be battling against. So you have to put genuine effort into constructing this person and understanding this person. The reason I'm saying do this is because this is what motivates me every single day. When I was training for a fight, the reason I'd always go train is because I knew my enemy was training. But when I stopped fighting professionally, I thought, well, I don't what enemy do I have? And I realized I had to create my own. So when I don't feel like going to the gym, I imagine I've built my own enemy. I won't even list all the things that my enemy has. He has a whole bunch of shit I don't have. And he's a, a, he would be an impossible, nearly impossible person to be. But when I sit and I don't feel like going to the gym, I know my enemy's training because he trained no matter what, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's pissed off or if there's traffic or it's raining or he's tired, my enemy trains. When I see a girl and she's beautiful, but all her friends are there and I'm afraid they're gonna laugh at me, my enemy wouldn't give a f he'd go over there anyway. That's who he is, he's a man. So when I understood who I was truly battling against, then you have two choices. You either rise up to try and take him on or you become a little pussy. You have the choice. Do I wanna lose to this man, this man I've created and I've built? Do I wanna lose to him or do I wanna beat him or compete with him? And you have to make a choice and you sit there and go, well, I know that the person I created in my mind, my, my arch nemesis would go over there and he talked to all the girls. And he two of them let alone one. This is an extremely important facet 
And for the next six weeks, we're going to be doing lots of things that are going to revert back to the enemy that you've created. So you have to put genuine effort into putting together this person. You have to imagine everything about them. From start to finish, you have to imagine standing next to them. If you were standing next to this guy right now with no shirt on, who would girls want to be? Who would people respect? And the crazy thing about all of this is that this person is you. This person is you. It's just you with a little bit of a different path or a different take on life. It's you who's the person who does whatever he's supposed to do regardless of how he feels. It's you with an iron mind. This is the exact point. The reason creating this enemy is so important and the reason viewing how he, viewing him and seeing how he sees the world and, and understanding how important and powerful this person is, is important is because that person is you. That person is you who does what he's supposed to do without fail. That's all it is. And when you truly, truly put this person together and you truly, truly understand it, and you find out what you could be and you find out what you're battling against, you're going to become far more difficult to demotivate. It's going to be much harder for someone to say to you, don't go to the gym, because you're going to know, well, my, opponent, my enemy, this guy, give him a name, whatever. This dude's going to the gym. That's why he looks how he looks. And that's who I'm being compared to. So I have to go to the gym. Oh yeah, but you know, I'm tired. Well, you don't go then. My training partner doesn't want to go. Fine, you don't go. I am going. I'm not the guy who's going to let this man beat me. And you have to start comparing yourself to this guy in every single facet. I still do it to this day. I compare my bank balance to this guy's and he's killing me. I compare my body to this guy's, he's killing me. I compare so many things about myself. You guys may look at me and go, oh, Tate, millionaire, girls, this, that, that, that. I'm still comparing myself to this person I've created. And I know that I'm losing. And that's what drives me forward. That's why I don't miss the gym. That's how I find a way to make money. That's how I do whatever it takes to succeed because I know who I'm battling against. Most of you guys have no enemy. You have no enemy. Or you have an enemy which is somebody else. You look at a Justin Bieber or a Drake or something. That, that's not going to motivate you. That's pointless. It's not going to help you. Or you have no enemy at all. You have a support structure around you and you have people who say, Oh, you're great just the way you are. You know, you're beautiful just the way you are. And you're sitting there and living in your little comfort zone with a little bitch. Put this enemy together from start to finish. And when you truly put this list together, you truly create this person and truly understand that it could be you. It's going to be far more difficult to stop you doing what you need to do in the future. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Mm -hmm. You can give it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack a table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. He'll look at it and it's long. And he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have so if you're a quitter, I don't even want you even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. 